possibly get seated we'd like to start the evening's events in a minute or two if you could find your seats that would be great could this, be louder this gentleman over yeah, here louder. Jim Fernandez, you see what he's doing with the, the video if you'd like to get you and a guest or anybody else in the video we're going to post this sometime later i don't think they can hear you Paul, can they hear? Can anybody? You might want to get them to pipe down. Can I have everybody's attention, please? Please? down for just a minute or two. Yeah. Try it again. It Got it. summer of 69, and we'd like, as a committee, to welcome everybody here to something that we thought we'd never pull off a year ago this month. About two years ago, I was sitting on a park bench, never thinking I'd do this as a grandfather, watching my youngest grandson play. They were playing tag, and he said to me, Papa, Chase me. And I said, as probably many of you have said, Silas, I'm sorry, I just can't do that anymore. I'm too old. He came over and said, Papa, you're not too old, you're just wrinkled. <laughs> so that's the theme of the night. We're, we're not too old, we're just a bit wrinkled. I'd like to have, if you can hear me, everybody in the room who served in any of the armed forces of the United States to please stand up and be recognized. Also, I'd like to have first responders, including police, firemen, and EMT, please stand up and be recognized and thank you for your service. A reminder that there is free water and soda tables throughout the complex. Also, for you women involved, the two inside restrooms are strictly for you. The porta potties outside are for all the guys, so please take advantage of that.
For all you women here, Sheila Hirschberg was invited but couldn't make it tonight. But I have a tape measure. We'll be measuring your skirts and everything up here for the next five minutes. I'm going to walk around. All right. Good, good. I can see that one over me. Spring Parlor over here, which will be open later on tonight. Actually, it's been hard, Dennis, because hey, I, I gotta tell you, Jimmy. Uh huh. Want me to tell the stories about yeah. you? Yeah. I'm not gonna. <laughs> Any any theories on who wrote 
the alma mater. It wasn't the big mystery. No idea. Now, I just heard today that somebody had a an older sibling, uh, and which was before Paney was even at the school, and they said that the alma mater was was already in place before he got there. Uh, but I don't know how verified that was. That was just something. The rest of the group at the at the alumni house, yeah, they're not convinced. John, uh, the other thing was the fight song. Right, that was it. That was his. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess you wrote, rewrote the charts for the hundred, right? Can't remember, did I? <laughs> he asked first. I, I he asked first. <laughs> but but if the orchestra or the band played the alma mater, somebody because they threw all the stuff away. Okay, I don't know if that was me or not. I believe it was you. Maybe. You just wrote it from memory. Yeah, God. So I don't even remember that. <laughs> yeah. You did it so quick. <laughs> Memory work. Oh, gosh. I'm over 40, so. <laughs> well, thanks, guys. And you, and you, let's gather some more crescendos and whatever, yeah. and let's do some more of this. Thank you, John. Thanks, I'm Steve. On tape. I'm so proud of this. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, thank you, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, oh, great great day, too. Oh, thanks. Yeah. I can see all you guys. Give me two seconds. Is anything okay? Make an adjustment. Make an adjustment. Yeah, that's better. But you're not that sure. You're throwing some shade on me. That's right. You're not that sure. I didn't say that. <laughs> I was just quoted. I think he's got the right Oh, that's thing. much better. Yeah. Well, it's better for the camera. Here, I'll get over here and squat. Yeah, yeah, no. Then you're good. Yeah. yeah. All good. right. Get down to Steve's side. And he was the drum major. All right, so we're rolling video. You, you got to come in this way. All right, so here we are. We're even closer, fellas. Just like the band bus. Remember? Hey, who's here? Oh, it's me. And it's him. All right. Do everybody know what this is? Yeah. All right, so. What do you want us to do, Jim? Guys are all together. Go for it. It's a video. So people will see on YouTube. So here's all the, all the, the magical misfits. <laughs> the magical misfits that made it all happen. It was literally that one room that kept me in school and interested for three years. Bill, Bill Payne made it fun. That's right. Especially when he. When he Throw down his, throw down his baton and say, do it yourself. Do it yourself. <laughs> I'm done with you guys. And we were all like, uh oh, what do we do now? <laughs> okay, we're done. Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to do it still or no? We can do still. Hey, hey Larry. This is all the musicians. Hey, Steve. Let's do a still real quick. What are we doing? A still. And then we're going to you know, and we would like, with our right hands, I think.
Dear Mr. Siegel, would you please tell your students about a class I'm teaching at UCLA called Workshop in Jazz Bass. That was my last classical lesson that they got. I saved $65. <laughs> And I had rolled in that course and studied with Ray Brown at 16 years old. And it all stemmed from Bill King not making it away from me. So it was pretty amazing. That is pretty cool. He got me of one of my first people. I mean, Bobby Crane. Did you ever know Bobby Crane? Name, no, I don't know. Yeah, he was kind of a Dixieland draft. He did something for me that no other teacher had ever done. He would play records of trombone players. So I want you to copy this guy's song. So he's giving me the records to take care So I go home with a stack of LPs and let's listen to these trombone players. I'm trying to give it to the vibrato and the style. Which people don't, that's not the textbook way of teaching. That's the way all the musicians do it. Sorry, go ahead. And anyway, but I'm, anyway, that gave me a foundation. Now, you played with Buddy Rich, right? Now, can you tell us how that happened? Well, it was wild. I mean, I was playing in, in college. I was taking all my classes at L.A. Valley College and playing in the band there, which was a good band. had a lot of great arrangements. And I was also, because of the, the band director there was Bill Payne's idol, Bob McDonald. And he said he learned everything about the band director from Bob McDonald. So, L.A. City College was where Bob McDonald was in his band rehearsed Monday and Wednesday. Our band at Valley was Tuesday and Thursday, so I enrolled at, at LA City and was playing in their band too. And while I'm playing in that band, John McGill had just gotten off the road with Buddy Rich from playing Lee Trumpet with Buddy and came and started playing in our band at LA Valley at LA City. So when Buddy's band needed a trombone player, they called him for the and Johnny recommended me. So that's that's how I got that call. It was incredible luck. The rest is history. <laughs> well, that's you never know what contact, what circumstance will lead to something. You know. Yeah. And you know, I tell a lot of, I do a lot of teaching. I tell all my students, it's not networking. We don't network in our business because it's too personal. If you ever feel like something is using you as a, a stepping stone to further their career, it feels dirty. Uh, instead, if we look at all of our situations as artists, it's always about relationship building. We, never, we don't network with each other. Each other. We build friendships and relationships with them. And that's really what it's about that in, the, in the world of art and the world of music. You know, as a, as freelancers, you're competing with the same people that you were friends with just by the nature of the business. You're all in the, you're all in the workforce and you're, you're all in the pool. But if you actively compete against somebody, that's it. That's it. And I, I've always been careful. I don't even want to get the impression of doing that, even if I'm not. But the, just the impression of impropriety like that is a bad thing. So I go out of my way to never appear if I'm subbing for somebody to be trying to get their job for myself. Yeah, but there have been a lot of people who thought that it's every man for himself. Actually, the good news is that there haven't been a lot of people. Because the vast majority of people in our business are amazing and beautiful people. It's the people who don't get what Alan is talking about that fall by the wayside. That's kind of the good news. And it is true. It is true. You know, the, cream is, the cream kind of rises to the top. I've always told them that there's always room for the open and the cream rises to the top. And it does, it does seem to be the case. You know, when I when I left Venice High, I, I gave up the trumpet because of, because of my major that I pursued in half the time. But uh, my father taught me, and my father taught music at Venice High from 1951 to 1955. A lot of, a lot of people didn't know that. My father taught Steve Williams. He taught Bruce Slaughter, he taught Barry Slaughter, he taught me, he taught lots and lots of wind players. So I owe my musical background to my father who taught.
taught me 35 years after I got out of college and was well into my career, my son wanted to play. So my father passed that to me. I taught my son. My son dropped off. I started playing again about 15 years ago or so. And I ended up being principal trumpet in a symphony orchestra. I'm, I'm since, I don't have the time to practice. I'm, I'm second trumpet now. But my father, after he retired from, from teaching at Emerson Junior High, was emeritus, emeritus conductor for the San Monica Emeritus Band until he was 84. He retired at age 84. He's still alive. He's 95. And you can't imagine how many of the crescendos, there are other crescendos that he taught. He said, tell anybody I said hi. He's got somebody that... that yeah, the, lead, the, lead, the leader of the band. Yeah, so my, my music wasn't my, wasn't my career. It's a passion. It's a wonderful thing. Uh, my father was a, uh, a great musician, a great teacher. Wow. Say hi, Dad. What an honor. Hey, Dad. <laughs> Love you. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Right? So the idea primarily is for those people that you remember that you give a shout out to that didn't make it to me. So we're going to put it on YouTube. And so, and also just give us a little story about Venice High School because one picture would not be able to tell your story, right? <laughs> Tom? Right? So, I can't see it anyway. I can't see it anyway. What is she doing? Give us a story. How did you, you guys are married? Yeah. How'd you meet? Oh God, you I was sitting on his fence, and he told me that you're not supposed to sit on the fence. So I got that's off. Not <laughs> that, that's not a fight. Where was we his actually, fence? His he fence? His house. Good actually, for him. <laughs> actually, I was visiting his next door neighbor, and I was waiting for her to come out. At least there's that. <laughs>
19 months older than us. And I'm Debbie's husband, Gary, from Tennessee, Maryville, Tennessee. He's a photo bomber. He's a photo bomber. And we used to hang around outside of the administration building, and there were 30 of us that hung around together. And there you go, that's been as well. I remember the chalets. They woke us up very early, like 6 o'clock in the morning, and took us to this mall in Santa Monica and made us get down on our knees and roll peanuts with our nose. That was initiation. <laughs> start with you. What is your name? Anita. What year? What year? Summer 69. You? Toby, Summer 69. Woohoo! 68. You got a name? Summer. Sandra. You got a name? Sandra. Okay, all right. Gloria, Summer 69. Rachel, Winter 69. Mary, Winter 69. Okay. She's sitting down. That's why we can't see her. Okay. Yep. Kathy, Summer 69. Good. <laughs> okay. Supposed to be like the Dick Clark show. Gloria, winner seventy. American Bandstand. <laughs> okay. Now that we got everybody identified. Two lights, but this will work. I remember you. You got a light right here. I was a boy. Okay, so we got to move to the light. Go to the light? Go to the light. That, I thought we weren't supposed to go to the light. Don't go to the light. Joy, hurry. We got one more coming. Somebody stop me. Somebody stop me. <laughs> go to the light. Get closer. Come on, there's a reunion. Reun. You know, don't be shy. All right, okay, That's so. Close? Well, it's a well, wide angle. Wait till yeah. you see what it looks We're like. We're like a Monet. We're better from a distance. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh All right. So we're, we're shooting live video, and we just want you to introduce yourselves and give some well, stories I'm about. Give us a picture. I'll take a picture I afterwards. Okay. So, what's your name? What's your name? Year? Much? First year. What am I supposed to do? Your name. Name. Left to it. Your name, name. Oh, I left to it. I, I remember you. Year. You do. 69. Yes, Shirley Blazer. Estelle, oh, Estelle Belanakis, 69. Patty Zello, 69. All right, so do, do any of you gals remember the first girls' pants day? First girls. We could, we weren't allowed we to wear pants. We were never allowed to wear pants. Never were allowed to wear pants. Okay, okay. A Miss Hirschberg story. Miss Hirschberg, she. She uh, expelled me from school two weeks before graduation.
graduation for a oh, short skirt. Because when we had yes, kneel on, on the ground. Because we kneel on, on the ground. Because it was the third time I was yeah. taught. And we had, to, <laughs> we had to kneel on the ground to make sure our skirt touched the... Uh, yeah. We used to stop at the barber shop and roll up our skirts really short. Oh, oh, I bet you that went over well at the barber shop. They loved us. They looked for us every morning. Hello. Oh, God. Do you know which one? Right there on Venice and Beethoven. The famous one. Just as barber shop. That's the story I was looking for. Excellent. Okay. Okay. Oh, I got Randy cleaners. There you go. Okay, you wanted your picture. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Start it again. Wait, wait, wait. All right. So again, is this is time. wait is this story is this story summer sixty or summer seventy? No, we were in junior high. No, we were in. Uh, remember how we went to Crestline? Yes. Oh my That's God! Right. And we all smoked pot for the first time. I know I got high and I had to see it. And we smoked alcohol. And we kept yeah, and we kept saying we weren't high, and we talked yeah. about not being high for about like an hour. And, and then nobody could find their keys. My mom got to take that we only would let your mom because she was the coolest mom. She didn't give a shit. My mom would be my mom would be beating us. I was standing there, I was sitting there shaking the seeds out of the pot. We used to have to I do that. The top no, no. The stuff my gr son grows now. I'm such a good trimmer. Oh my god. It's like, mom, you've done this for me. I trim it. Yeah. His stuff is clean. There's not a lot of seeds in it. My favorite is called Orange Crush. I really like the 818. <laughs> oh, you guys win. The best video of the night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we grow up. I just rub them in my foot because I get a little arthritis for my dancing. Oh my God. Why are you doing it? That was funny. He recorded it? Yeah. Of course. <laughs> what do you think? We're rolling video. As a pastor, I'm not accustomed to talking, but I'll give it my best shot. We went to different high schools together. This is a mixed marriage. I went to Venice, she went to Culver, and I knew a guy in high school named Jimmy Fernandez. Best kid I ever met. And I'm hoping that he edits this to look really good. It's like, it's like the man on the street. Yeah, it's like the man on the street. With a thousand year old man with no books. How can you go wrong? I don't even know who we are. There's just I once said to my one-legged wife, I said, Peg? <laughs> can we get him to interview some people? This guy's a rock. I do that every Sunday. <laughs> I am, come on down. <laughs> All right, let me take a picture real quick. Good for you, buddy. All right, rolling. Down here in Costa Rica, but anyway, yeah, this is my buddy Yeah, we're gonna see you really where people went to hang to, to hide out. <laughs> yes, sir. Four walls in a bar, baby. All right. Yeah. We'll do it. I just saw Tony Garrido and Min Mayera. No, no. Tony's here. Yes. Oh, I gotta go. And I said, I said, because of you guys, we got to play. Remember that? That's right. Tommy Swan. I bought for him. Great quarterback. Just followed him around all night. Oh, I like you thinking. How is that, boy? I like you thinking, Mike. Listen, I do have a story. I have a story to tell. All right. We were all ready for the game. <laughs> wait a second. Wait, wait, you gotta stand over here. Tell us the whole story. Move into the light. I wasn't even my picture. Yeah, yeah. No. Come on, work the light. Come on. Come on, Connie. You know to work the light. Get in the light or I can't see. There you go, there you go. Oh, it looks good. One of the greatest quarterbacks I got to block for him. Is that right? And one time we had a guy in Mitch Sullivan. He was a halfback. Before a game, Tommy was ready to go. He had the tape, he had the black stuff, and Sullivan walks over and gives him one of these. Oh, I remember that. Uh, I remember. When I saw him, I was okay. like, what's wrong? 
I don't know what they're talking about, I know, but I don't, I don't, I don't think I, I want to know. <laughs> Anybody that you want to give a shout out to that didn't attend the, the reunion from your... Yeah, sure. Okay, say hi, because we're going to put it on YouTube. Now. Oh, okay. Hi, Bob and Holly. Where the hell are you? Yeah. Hi, Bob and Holly. And Bob and Renee. Bob and Renee, where are you? Bob and Renee. You missed this. Okay. <laughs> See you next time. Okay. See you next time. Bye. Bye. That's what... Okay. Richard, how you doing, bro? I don't have to say <laughs> Tell me. Yes. And I really. Okay, we're rolling. Okay. Yes. We'll be with you in a minute. Yeah. Okay. So tell this story. yourself Phoenicians. <laughs> I love it. I think you're just posers. <laughs> because I was born in Venice, born and raised in Venice. Everybody can say born and raised in Venice, but that's not the truth. Because they were born in Santa Monica, Culver City, LA, Inglewood. Okay? I was born at 225 Harlem Canal. April 1st, 1952, my grandmother delivered me in her kitchen. So, so there it is. So, so if anybody else can claim not to be a poser, I want you to come forward and show me that. All right? This is fun. Okay, okay, so this is a 50th reunion. You were 68. When are 68? Close enough. Okay. No, winter 60. I'm winter, winter 69. I'm sorry. I'm 68 years old. We stopped. We no, I'm not that old. We stopped keeping score. So wait, you're younger than me. Because I'm summer 69. So I'm winter 69, but I, I skipped the grade. When did you turn 68? I turned 68. Uh, March 23rd. Oh. So I'm two two months and a week older. Oh. But then how come you Kate moved from Texas. But he went earlier. Yeah. Oh. With, yeah. Oh. I came, came to California and they did these. I don't know if it was IQ test or two kind of equipment to test the whole school took it. And the teacher said, we've got two guys here that are near geniuses. Uh, really? One's the smartest kid in the class, which was me because I got straight A's. And the other, well, she didn't want to go into it, but he was the worst. Class, amazing thing. I saw him pick up a guitar and just play. I go, man, how long you been playing? That I mean, that's the kind of intelligence he had. So it was like he just figured stuff out on his own, but he wouldn't study. So he was one of these classic underachievers. Well, I was probably a classic overachiever. And so that's what I've done most of my life. Johnny for the money, the borrow. The, the, I was an actor and I was a screenwriter. Yeah. But just like you succeeded because you were not. In a sense, I guess, I don't know if it's confidence because I think in the early years I, I came from a. You're smart. I was smart and everything like that, but I, my family was a bunch of people. Oh, really? From Kentucky, you know, from Appalachia. Literally. So there was a lot of shame and guilt and, you know. Not, not, not good enough. Good man, I can't. Like, I remember I had to wear hand-me-downs for my father. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty bad, man. You know, you to wear hand-me-downs for my father. I did, and everything. So a lot of my life was about having fist fights with people, just to, to show them that you know, I'm not some sissy and not going to push me around. And my dad was a boxer, my uncle was a boxer, so oh, as a result, wow. okay, so you learned how to fight. Yeah. So I did a lot of that. So I was kind of like. Yeah. Yeah. So it worked in your favor. And I grew up in Texas. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
grew up a block off of it that never spun out. So oh. Heavy, heavy blood. Yeah. So that was that kind of swallowed me up. And eventually I came out the other side and I've been a few months old man So yeah, it's something I worry about because I have three adult sons. started going in, I almost cried. Uh, yeah, and people would say to me, you look to him, Johnny, you got to back off. And, and you know, they have a God too, you know, so yeah, just let him find him. And I did, they've been great. I'm very proud of them. People would say, well, one was in Sherman Oaks, I was in Sherman Oaks, one was in Panama City, oh, the other one was in Glendale and uh, Sierra Madre, he's got a girlfriend, he's like, I, I think he's good at her house, but he, you know, he takes my part. And what, now, what did you do? Charlie Remember Charlie? Of Charlie. course. Get in the no. shot, Charlie. Charlie. Go to the light. Charlie, Charlie knows Charlie. Bob. Yeah. All right, so I need all three of you guys. Charlie! Charlie. 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 John Young, man. Are you going to remember me at all? Yes. Take my jacket off. Should I take my okay. jacket off? Get off right now. No, no. Oh. I just need you all in the shot. Sure. <laughs> I'm taking my jacket off. Oh, they're showing Oh, God, you should have heard it. Yeah. Oh God! Oh, you are all down. You can't pay for it. Yeah. Oh, it was it was priceless. <laughs> okay, so I need you all in the shot. I need you on the shot, John. I know. I oh, Rocky. Rocky grew up next to me. No way. Rocky, oh, no way. Rocky lived on. Rocky lived on. Oh, Mike's, are you on Mike? Rocky. Hey, Charlie. Yeah, man. <laughs> Remember you by. She speaks, I recognize her. Jimmy Hart wants to talk to you. Hey, John! Coolest guy ever. I'll tell you, man. Smartest guy. Smartest guy ever. There you go. I'd be walking home from the field. He'd pull off on his bike. Hey, want to ride? Ride down his bike. He'd want to grab his locker. I'd be practicing. That's a so start. We get. Oh, you started? No, I said that's a start. Yeah. So anyway, so, so I get there in class, and I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I just get up on stage like this. And go. So 
our speech today, I'm going to tell you about how to properly brush your teeth. And I do the things like squirt the sentence, and you do it on this and this thing you do, and you go, and then you go, and I'm doing it, and then you go, and then, and that's all I do the whole damn time. See, he forgot his speech. This is genius. See what I mean? This is the genius. I spit it out, and I said, and that's how you brush your teeth. Got a huge applause, and Schmidt gave me an A. So about two, two, about two weeks later, you did something, and he complimented you and said, and Charlie is a great writer. And then he looked at me and he goes, and John is a great writer too. And I thought, from yeah. the toothpaste? <laughs> from the faking so it, the toothpaste. Faking it, exactly. So anyway. <laughs> so Charlie, and Charlie's sitting there and you can see the glimmer in his eye because he always had a glimmer in his eye. And he played every instrument, right? No, just trumpet. Just trumpet? No, you, no, you played something else, didn't you? In the beginning? You didn't trumpet. Play? Trumpet, trumpet, trumpet. That's why I was always afraid of getting hit. You played good with the camera. In the lift, yeah. <laughs> so, so Rocky used to dance a lot at uh, Country Joe's. Hey man, last time I said that, I went down to Cabo San Lucas and I walked in this coolest little bar. I mean, I'm telling you, about one of the coolest bars I've ever in my life. Who, who owns it? Jim Fernandez. I walk in, he's in there with his uh, condos, right? Just, you know, he's the entertainment, man. You go in, look cool music, booze, pretty girls, look at Cabo San Lucas, they just walk in, you know. They wander around, yeah. I wouldn't call them bikinis, two band-aids and a quirk. Woo! <laughs> or, or a dental floss. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and it, was, it was the coolest little bar I've been in, man. And I walk in here, my old buddy from Venice Island, I'm like, what are you doing here? He's like, what the hell are you doing here? So he owned this little bar, with the coolest bar I've ever been in my life. Love that bar, man. We all grew it and closed it down. Too bad. <laughs> now we gotta go to where, we, where, where are we going now? Well, I don't know. I wonder what embarrassing thing happened to you. Oh, we got two cameras. Shot. I mean, you're, yeah. Yeah. Oh, now she's in the shot. Now she's, in, no, she, oh, she in the shot now. Oh, yeah. All right. So, how do you know these girls? You. At one point or another. We all dated him. Yes, you look very familiar with these girls. We're all the same time. Yeah. Tell us a story from Venice High School. Yeah, I, I would. Oh, but Randy. Put them all here. Randy, hey. get in I here. I can't. I can't do this stuff. <laughs> I want You're to get taking my shirt off. Oh, oh my God! Take it off. Are you filming or what? <laughs> so, okay, we can't talk about the girls. Let's talk about the teacher. There was teachers. I don't remember what teacher. I, I don't remember what the teacher. I don't remember. Any no, I bet you wouldn't. <laughs> you were there. No. <laughs> Not in the shot. So the guys. I didn't go to most of my class. Moving in. Yeah. Randy's got to get in the shot. The girls got to come forward. You guys in the back or in the back? Okay. No, it doesn't work that way. I said the girl. Well, okay. You come that away. Randy, you're still not in the line. I'll go behind. I'll get behind Tina over here. Yeah. There you go. I was the secretary of the Corvette. And all the boys loved her. And all the boys loved her. Oh, they did. We they did. Right you think? Over. You think? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't stop the story. Oh, my God. We did everything. We did everything. We were really sure to do it. Oh, yeah. We're having movies together. This brings back memories. Look at these four. I know. So I want to hear another crest line. I want to hear another uh, Big Bear story. Okay, when we are on the class, going to crest line, I made a snowball <laughs> oh, no. I made a snowball with snow, and we, I poured alcohol in A snow cone, an alcoholic snow cone. Yeah, my first ever. All right, one story at a time. <laughs> Tina's snowball story first. Yeah. All right, here we go. Ah! 
So another Big Bear story. All right, I want to hear a Big Bear story from somebody. I'm not telling. I got it. Patty. It was Crestline. Crestline. Okay. All right, the Crestline story. Another Crestline story, because I know there was more than one. Then there was your sleepover when we all snuck out. John and Lucky saw me off. The whistle called the time Just six days out to the coast Just six days behind But I've seen every state since then And where my boys have gone Is known to God and for strong winds And I'm here all alone Ten long years have somehow passed Since I've seen my hometown And times I've spent upon those streets And faint familiar sounds Still whisper gently in my ear And play upon my eyes And I handhold these memories Till one by one they die but I still belong to everyone And if my sleep allows Well then I'll be running wild tonight With all of my old pals I can still hear passing trains I wonder what they see And somewhere's out my window Of the places that I might be Now I'm chasing down those pretty girls They wander through my mind Maybe they'll remember me When I work off my time But I still belong to everyone and if my sleep allows, well then all those girls will dance tonight with me in my old town. But I'm running every single night and every single day. Lord, I've tried everything I know to somehow find my way back to that one place in time that fun memory endowed. 